Reading notes can be very challenging and overwhelming, especially at the beginning. So we have a great lesson on how to read notation on the grand staff that uses the super cool prop. I call it my pen sheet. It's, it's just a piece of tin that has a staff um, stickered on there. So it's a super useful tool. So we're gonna talk today about how to read ledger line notes because once you've kind of figured out how to read notes on the staff and you're feeling real good about it and you encounter music that has notes that are way up here or way down here, it can be super confusing and it can take you a while to figure out the notes and that's it's no good. We want you reading notes fast. So let's talk about some ways that we can quickly read notes up high. So number one, or down low. So number one, you want to really be confident, you wanna have this, this top space of the treble clef when you're reading ledger lines above the treble clef locked down. So you wanna memorize that this guy here is E. You can use the old school, you know, face, F-A-C-E. So if you know this is E, all you need to master the ledger lines are your super great alphabet skills. <laughs> so this is E, this is F. Top line, treble clef, F. Now, if you see a note, let's say, let's, let's play this guy right here. He's, he's way up there. You know this is F. You know that if you go up to the next line, you're gonna skip in the alphabet. So you're gonna skip over G and go to A. And then you know, if you're gonna go up to the next line beyond this, you're gonna skip again. So this is A, skip B, C. So that's how you get through figuring out the ledger line notes. You can do some really quick work using your alphabet, looking at, since this ledger line note is a line note, find the top line of the staff, this is F, and then skip count your alphabet, F, A, C. Now this is actually really, really cool because when you're at this part of the staff, you can spell the word face, F, A, C, E, um, and then you can reset that concept beginning on this top line, F, A, C, and if you had another line here, you, that could be E. So that's kind of cool. It'll help you to read those much faster. Um, and then if it comes to say the space notes, maybe you have a note here. What I like to do is use that trick, reset that spelling of the word face, F, A, and then you just go up one step in the alphabet, that's B. So that's how you can read ledger line notes in the treble clef really, really quickly. Next up, we have the ledger lines that exist between the grand staff. So this can get a little bit complicated, so we're gonna work our way in steps, stick with me. Um, it doesn't have to be complicated. So in this, in my little tin sheet prop here, we have a middle C line shown all the way through the staff, which you wouldn't normally see in sheet music, but it's there to help quantify that middle C is important and it exists between treble and bass clef, and it kind of serves as like this neutral ground. This can be played with the left hand or it could be played with the right hand, so shown in the treble or the bass, and it's the same place on the piano, it's the C in the middle. So when you're looking at sheet music and you see that first ledger line below the treble clef, you know that that is middle C and it is played with your right hand. When you see notation that shows that middle C line just above the bass clef, and you'll know that it belongs to the bass clef because that middle C line kind of shows a little bit lower. That middle C is then played in the bass clef, often mostly with the left hand. Now this is where things can get a little bit complicated because while middle C is the connector between the grand staff, the treble, this is the treble, the treble and the bass, um, it can also, you can have ledger lines above this middle C point that belong to the bass clef. So let's just take a look at that for a second. Here you see middle C shown, that's the first ledger line above this bass clef. So you've got that memorized because you should. Middle C is a very important one, you should just know it by looking at it. You've got your middle C. Now what happens if you get another ledger line above that? We're gonna use the same trick we used for the treble clef. We're gonna skip count up in our alphabet from C. So you know this is middle C, you jump up from that and you end up on E. So now you're playing the E above middle C in the bass clef, meaning you're gonna be playing a little bit in treble clef territory with your left hand. And so you can negotiate through those ledger lines, skip counting through your alphabet when you're moving from line to line or just moving up in steps through your alphabet when you're moving from line to space or space to line. So that should help you move through that much more smoothly. The other way you will see this shown is when you've got your treble clef and you've got these ledger lines that are existing below middle C in the treble clef. So once again, go back to that foundation of I know middle C 
Uh, if you've got a note hanging out just one below that middle C line, count down in your alphabet by one, you've got B. If you've got a note that exists two ledger lines below, you know, you've got middle C, that's one, you've got another ledger line below that, that's two. You skip count down in your alphabet from C and you'll end up on A. And that's how you can negotiate ledger lines in the middle of the staff. Okay, so this brings us to the bass clef, which has always felt a little bit more complicated for me because instead of counting up your alphabet, you're counting down. So it, it's flipped over. So it really helps if you know that this is all cows eat grass because you'll know right away this is A. Now, if you wanna do just simple counting, you can just go one down from A, which is G, and then you know that you can kind of just skip count down your alphabet from there. So if this is G, you think, I visualize a keyboard in my mind, I see a G, and then I go, oh, a jump down from G is E. And then I can think again, okay, a jump down from E is, yay, we're on C. So this is a super low C on the piano. Um, so that's one way to do it. But you can also use the rhyme, kind of like we did in the treble clef, but again, we have to reverse it. So if this is all cows eat grass, let's think of this backwards. So this is G, this is E, this is C, this is A, and then we're gonna just go to this line, which is G, and we're gonna repeat that pattern on the lines again. So this is G, E, C, and if we had another line, it would be A. And then you can just move up and down from those ledger lines from there, um, depending on what notes you're seeing. So if you saw this, I would really quickly think, G, E, okay, one down from E is D. Boom, I've got it. So <laughs> that's, how you can look at ledger lines to make them feel a little bit less overwhelming. Now, a lot of people when they're sight reading think I should just be able to see the notes on the page and play them. And for some people that is the case. I have to be completely honest with you. For me, it is not the story. If I see ledger line notes, I have to take a pause and think about it for a second. And that's okay. When you're learning music, you're supposed to be able to take your time and go through the process however you go through it. It's a very individual process. So use these skills to help you become better. The more you do this, the more you practice this, the faster you will get at it, I promise. Um, I hope you found these tips and tricks helpful. Thanks for watching. Comment below, say hello. I always love to hear from you and we'll see you around.